Hey there, I'm back again with another inverter video. Last time I was showing you a power jack that had some uh, pretty bold claims behind it. Uh, so the other thing that uh, was challenging me with finding a proper inverter was the battery voltage that I'm using. Because I'm using a Tesla uh, lithium ion battery pack, it has slightly different voltages than lead acid battery packs. Uh, so I wanted something I could customize. Fortunately, the Chinese website AliExpress, uh, Alibaba is uh, similar. Uh, they're kind of the same company. AliExpress does more smaller quantities. Alibaba is for more industrial stuff. They're selling these inverter boards on there at a pretty reasonable price. I started out with this one, and then I moved up to this big red one there. And there's some differences between the two, but this is a good test mule. It's good for learning and figuring out how these things work. Um, and so I'll get to the, I'll do a demonstration here in a second, but the brains behind these boards is this guy right here. You could probably do something like this on a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino or something like that, but it's, these things are so cheap. You can get them for like eight bucks. And this is what creates the sine wave. It's a modulated sine wave. So it has about 25 kilohertz uh, chopping signal and the, it's pulse width modulated at a rate to do 60 hertz or 50 hertz. The 50 hertz can be selected by soldering together uh, those jumpers there. Right now I have it set to 60 hertz. Switch this over to uh, 50 hertz. So that's the default. It comes at 50 hertz. So these things can really be used anywhere in the world. Because the other thing about this is it really depends on the transformer you use. Because it really all it does, it takes your battery voltage and turns it directly into AC at 50 or 60 hertz. And that's it. There's no boost. There's no buck. There's nothing. So it relies on feedback and a transformer such as this one. This transformer is only good for 500 volt amps. Now, a lot of people say watts, especially in descriptions on the internet. Volt amps and watts are not the same thing, but you know, for if you're only using resistive loads and, and power factor of one loads, then it, they are the same thing. It works out to be the same. Uh, but volt amps are really what your limitations are for your transformer. Um, so they'll rate these inverters in watts. They really mean volt amps. They also rate them uh, say, I think that blue one that I got, this is for 3000 watts. That's really only a, 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 a I just dropped it, but that's okay. Um, survive the drop test. Anyways, 3000 watts really means 3000 volt amps, but really at its highest voltage. If your battery sags down a bit, you're really limited on your current and they don't really advertise how many amps this thing can do. This big guy here, I finally got an answer out of the guy. This can do 150 amps. So as long as I don't exceed that, it's good. And it just so happens if you're putting 50 volts into it and 50 uh, at 150 amps, guess what? This is actually, he advertises this at 7,500 watts, and that means it does 7,500 watts. And I actually have tested it. And uh, I melted a few things doing that in the process. Uh, this is an inductor that he, they highly recommend to include. And this inductor is rated for 150 amps, or at least that's what he says. And it had a nice blue kind of plastic heat shrink on it, and it melted off when I was doing that. But I think I was over that limit. I think I was probably doing 160 amps at the time because I was targeting 7,500 watts. I didn't know better. Now I know better. Don't exceed the number of amps that it's rated for, although they don't always tell you what that is. So what the, I guess what you want to look at is you look at your peak nominal voltage, such as 48 volts on this particular one, and you round that up to the nearest tenth, like for 50 volts. And if they say it's 3,000 watts, well then how many amps do you get out of that? And that's the maximum amps. Do not exceed that because that's the maximum. And that means the watts will go down as the voltage drops. I'm going to give a little uh, brief tour of how this thing works. All the silk screen is in Chinese. I do not read Chinese. I cannot speak Chinese. I'm sorry. Um, but they have provided some basic translation here as to what each component does, although it's kind of broken English a little bit. Um, there's a battery voltage low, a battery voltage high, and both of these things, if it triggers, it will shut off the inverter. There's short circuit protection and overload protection, and both of these are monitoring amps, both of these are monitoring volts, and all that is is a quad op amp. So if you have a first year uh, post-secondary electronics, you know what an op amp is, but guess what, you're qualified to fix and build this inverter. Uh, it's really straightforward, very simple. That means it's easy to fix. So uh, I've tweaked this down to work on the voltages that I want to. The, tr the little bit trickier thing though is setting these current values. Uh, and one of these, what this this uh, device does, this is the blue one here, 
kind of similar explanation. They've added a resistor that goes up onto a specific point on here, and it is a mystery as to why they did that. And the reason is this board, which is kind of a off-the-shelf kind of thing, uh, only has one current feedback uh, input, but they want to have two current feedback points, one for uh, like uh, short circuit protection, meaning like if, if it exceeds its surge capability, shut it off, and the same thing if it's just uh, kind of continuous current capability. And I need to set this one for 150 amps, and this one, in, in my case, I'm going to double it at 300 amps. I'm not going to put 150 amp or, th or uh, 300 amp load through this to test these things. I will melt things. So what I have to do is you probe these and to get the you have to understand what voltage it's outputting of the op amp because that's your shunt really because it's going to be different every time. You got to calibrate it, I guess. Like say for example, I'm going to set this to 75 amps DC uh, with my variable load and then um, then adjust this so that it's uh, basically ha halfway to triggering. And there's it's a it's a little bit more into it than that because you need to know what point it triggers. Uh, and I have some notes somewhere because I've already done this. And then this one here, just simply double it. Um, and then you'd be good to go. So why would I put a 7500 watt inverter on a 500 watt transformer? Well, this is just on the bench. If you get a 7500 watt transformer, it's more than 100 pounds. It's pretty heavy. And actually, it just so happens that I have one. It's in the garage. I will do that in my next video. Uh, but for now, uh, this is just the bench test. Um, uh, long story short, I damaged this guy with some experiments that I was doing, and I just finished repairing it. So uh, I just got it back together, and it seems to be working pretty good. One of the other uh, modifications that's kind of inspired from this, one of the pitfalls of this design, is they do require feedback, but they the feedback goes on these little tiny wires. Remember, the default for this is 250 or 220 volts AC. You have 220 volts AC unfused coming through these little wires, going through this little connector, through that rectifier, and then uh, then fed back into there at a low voltage. That's kind of crazy because if something happens to these wires, you're gonna you're asking for a fire or something something bad to happen. Uh, and so there's a way to mitigate this. On this newer version, there was a transformer here, which is great and everything, but you still have these little tiny wires bringing the feedback at 220 volts coming back in. So uh, that was kind of dumb, but it, all, it made it really good because now I can have this thing completely isolated. What I've done is I've taken that transformer out and put it on a daughter board over here, along with some filter capacitors. I also will have on another separate daughter board uh, surge absorption. And I'll explain that on my next video as well. But now this is now completely isolating all the DC side. So this AC side isolated from the DC side, which is great. That means you can add ground to your center tap if you want. You can, uh, you can have 120, 120 to have 240. Uh, or maybe you don't care about that in your country. Maybe you only want 220 or 200 or 100, who cares? It's up to your transformer. This thing doesn't care. You just have to have this uh, feedback bringing it back to the right voltage it needs. And that's what these potentiometers here are for. You can adjust the output voltage accordingly. So um, that's what this thing's for, right? So this actually only has about 10 volts AC going through it. Not only that, I added a fuse. So if this thing gets chopped, the fuse is going to blow and the whole thing will shut off because it's like, oh, there's no feedback, what's going on? And it'll shut off. Uh, so that's all pretty good. So let's do a demo. So I got this power supply also from AliExpress. It's just an LED uh, uh, driver. And then I had this, uh, this thing here is like a buck converter to uh, bring it down to whatever voltage I set it to. So I'm going to click it on. It's 48 volts. And I got a red LED there, but the system's not turned on yet. So I got this little switch here. I click it on, it'll ramp it up. You hear a buzzing sound, that's the transformer. And there you go, I got 236 volts AC on the output. And if I move the probe, which I'm not going to right now because I don't want to risk a nasty shock, put it to that center point, which is also connected there, I'll get 120 or actually 117 volts. But here's how that works. So I'm gonna put my little pot tweaker on here and I'm going to adjust that down so there's that's one way and can bring it right to 240 volts and that's just with that guy so I'm going to put it back to where it was because every transformer is different I don't want this to work out the way it was when last time when I had it out in the garage and yeah so it's pulling just with no load at all um, it's pulling about 700 milliamps 
And the point of this inductor is to reduce that no load current draw. And it actually does work. Uh, and it's probably proportional to the size of the transformer. So it's not that big of a deal. Uh, I think it pulls about just slightly over one amp. Uh, without that, and with it, it brings it down. The capacitors increase the current a little bit, but they smooth out that sine wave. And in my next video, and I'll, I'll, I'll show what the sine wave looks like. Uh, it's a bit more involved to show what well, my crappy oscilloscope made out of garbage. This is a whole other story. Uh, anyways, uh, if you have any questions about these, put them in the comments and I'll see what I can do to sort that out. The, I, the concept behind this is that it is cheaper and more uh, viable to create a custom inverter doing it this way. However, um, now that there's uh, inverters out, if you look at EVTV, um, that's uh, Jack Rickard and uh, his uh, ongoing uh, saga for electric vehicles and uh, solar power and things like that. He commissioned the uh, Chinese guys, I think Sinopoly, to do an inverter that works on Tesla batteries. And he did that after I started all this. And I probably would have gone that route, except for I got an unbelievable deal on that big transformer in, out in the garage. Uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, I got that inverter so cheap compared to what it was, what it would have been brand new. And it is, it is a brand new, brand new inverter. But if you look at the whole cost of this project, and the retail cost of that transformer, it adds up to be about the same as to just buy a trans uh, an inverter that's already been put together. So uh, in this case, it worked out, but in your case, it may not. So it really depends on where you can get a transformer, how cheap you can get a transformer, and, and how custom you need your inverter to be. Because, man, talking to the Chinese when nobody has this common language is just so difficult. Uh, you got, it's, it's a special skill to be able to get custom stuff out of there. And then there's minimum order quantities as well. So I'm just doing this one for myself right now. Uh, okay, that's it. I've talked long enough. Thanks for watching.